Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today, we are going to conclude the topic Advanced Display by looking at the final display known as flowcharts. A flowchart is said to be a pictorial way of representing an algorithm using a set of standard symbols or shapes. Flowcharts use different symbols to represent input, processing, and output operations. The operations are connected with arrows which serve as flow lines. There are various symbols that are utilized by flowcharts. We will not use all of them for a subject area, but a few of such symbols include the process box, which indicates the type of internal operation inside of the processor. The input-output box is used for input-output operation. It indicates that the computer is to obtain data or output results. The decision box in the form of a diamond shape is used to ask a question that can be answered in a binary format, either yes or no, true or false, the connector, and this allows the flowchart to be drawn without intersecting lines or without a reverse flow. We'll not use the predefined process today, but it's used to invoke a subroot or an in or interrupt program. We have the terminal, sometimes referred to as a start-stop operation. Here it indicates the starting or ending of the program, the process, or interrupt the program. And finally, we have flow lines, and flow lines are used to show the direction or flow of the flowchart by connecting them together. What are some of the guidelines for typing flowcharts? We should always ensure for this subject area that we try to get the diagram in the center of the page. We use auto shapes to select the various flowchart symbols required. Once we select the, right, select the symbol, we right click on it to insert text. We will then repeat this process until the flowchart is complete. Afterwards, you can format the flowchart to your heart's desire by adding color and anything else you see to use to make it appropriate. For today, we're going to look at a question. However, for EDPM, the questions are normally, you normally get a flowchart and you're asked to type that flowchart using various manuscript signs, etc. But for my purpose today, rather than just doing a flowchart, I'm given a question so that you can follow as I go along. You are the security guard at a supermarket. You are asked to check the temperature of the customers entering. Persons whose temperature is greater than 37.5 degrees Celsius is said to have a fever and should go home. Persons whose temperature is below can enter the supermarket. Now there are some key things that we need to pick out. We need to find out what is our input for this flowchart, which is what we are dealing with. We are dealing with temperature. What do we do with the temperature once we find out? We now have to make a decision. It says here that if the person has a temperature of over 37.5 degrees Celsius, that means that they have a fever and they should go home. However, if the temperature is under this, the person is free to enter the supermarket and do their shopping. How do we construct a flowchart with this? Let us go by Microsoft Word to see. Here I am in Microsoft Word. The first thing I do is to type a heading. The heading I'm going to give to my flowchart, I'm going to name it temperature. Temperature check. Wow. Temperature check. Good. I'm going to highlight my heading. I'm going to put it in Times New Roman. And I may select about font size 14 and put it in the center. With EDPM, we normally type on no spacing. But for our display work, we are given a bit of allowance. But I'm going to select no spacing, and I'm going to go back in the center and start my flowchart, trying to get a triple space between the heading and the body. How do I start this flowchart? The first thing I need are my terminals, my start terminator. I'm going to go to insert and select shapes. There's a complete list of options here, 
but there's a section completely for flowcharts where we have all the different symbols used in a flowchart. We hover over each to see what it is that we want. But I know what I'm looking for, so I'll click on it. This is the terminal. The start terminal, and I will have one at the end of the flowchart. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to add text. I'm going to write the word start. I'm going to put that in the center of the box. Next, I need my input output box. Here I go. I try not for it. Sometimes the flowcharts will tend to be a bit large. So we try not for the boxes not to be too fat, too long. Right click and I'm going to add my text. So the first thing we need to do is to read the data. What are we finding out? The temperature of the persons. So I'm going to write temp for short. I'm going to select no spacing in each box to put the words together. If I don't, it will be too spacey and that will cause a problem with my boxes being too large. So temperature. I can maybe carry this up a bit. Okay, good. Next, I need to make a decision. I go back to shapes and I find my decision box, which is the diamond shape. We try for our flowchart to be in the center, as we said before. And I'm adding my text. What is the decision that I have to make? So we need to determine, and it's normally written in the form of a question. Is temp, and temp is referring to the temperature above, is temp greater than 37.5? Question sign. I'm going to put that in no spacing. And maybe widen it a bit. Putting the data in the center of the box. Okay, good. So what will happen if temperature is greater than 37.5? I'm going to copy this box rather than going back up the top. So I'm going to put one on this side. And I'm going to paste again. So one is for my, for yes, one is for no, as it relates to my decision. So if it is a yes, if the person's temperature is greater than 37.5, what do I want to print? I'm going to print go home. I'm going to highlight this and put it in no space. And you realize when I select no space and everything is shown on the screen, go home and I'm going to put that in the center. If not, what will I print? I'm going to print, come in. But you know the question, so you know what would have been there. Again, highlight it and put it in, no spacing. No spacing is a key thing, one of the major things for this subject area. Come in. Good. Now that I've done this, I need to join back my flow chart. Look at the top. I'm following a straight line coming down. And as such, I need to come back. I branched off with the decision box, and so I need to come back on path. And ensure that these boxes are not over in the margin. Okay? All right, good. So I need a connector to so come back on path. Go to insert, shapes, and select connector. The connector will bring everything back together. And then... I'm going to copy this terminal here because we, I want both of them to be the same size and paste. And I'll take that to the bottom of my flow chart. And I'll write stop. Now that I have my flow chart completed to some extent, the final thing I need to do is to add my flow lines or my arrows. Please note that Lines are not used for flowcharts. We use line for organizational charts and we use the arrows for the flowchart. And our line should not be blurry. Once it looks a bit blurry, it means it's not properly drawn. I'm going to copy this, deselect, and press paste. 
I'm going to paste a few of them. And I lighten it up with the one above it. It should not be down in the box, so I click on it and ensure that the T touches the box. Good. Here, I'm going to do a bit of branching off. Let me paste one more. I'm going to do a bit of branching off with the decision box. With the decision box, we normally have one line entering and two lines leaving, either from the bottom or the bottom or one of the sides or both of the sides. For this diagram, I'm going to put my decisions, the my lines to the sides. So I need a straight line to do this. And then I connect the top. Remember the T touches the line, show that it's okay. Go again. And then I take this up. Line is a bit long, click and drag in place. Almost complete. Now I need to do the same by bringing my flowchart back together. And I'll do so with the connector in the center. Lining up the line so I know that the line will come here. I'm going to copy that line. Deselect and press paste. Take that line to the other side. Line on top with the line above, coming straight down. Good. Now I need my arrows. This is a bit blurry, so I take it down. Another arrow. That arrow cannot be copied because it will turn in the direction that you're seeing. So I have to get a different arrow and turn it in the direction that I want. Now all I need is a line coming from my connector to end the process. And my flow chart will be complete. There you go. So that's it for the flowchart. The final thing I can do, if necessary, is just to add some color to this. But also we should ensure when we have a decision box, let me quickly do this. I missed out this one. Is to have yes or no. So I'm going to put yes to one side and no to the other. How I go about doing that? I have a text box. I'm going to write yes inside. And I'm going to put it where I want it. I'm going to go to, while text box is selected, I'm going to go to shape outline and select no outline. Now that line around the yes will become invisible. I'm going to copy this. Copy this box. Deselect and press space and take it to the other side. And I'm going to type no and that's it the final thing i can do is to add some color to it you can add some color so i put my terminators in blue my process in green and my decision in red that's it my flowchart is complete. Let us look at print preview to see how it looks on the paper. Remember in EDPM we strive for it to be in the center. Flowchart is looking lovely. That's it for the video. If you like what you saw today, I have other videos coming out very soon. You can always like, share and subscribe to my channel. Do enjoy the rest of your day.